Well, the Super Bowl may have just wrapped up, but the NFL calendar doesn't stop. Next up, the Combine starting this week in Indianapolis. And joining us tonight is a man who scouted talent at the Combine as the former GM of the Jets. You might know his work currently with ESPN or the 33rd team, Mike Tannenbaum. Mike, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Joe, great to be with you. Good evening. Uh, it's an exciting time of year, so let's start big picture here. I think we found a little file footage of you hard at work at the Combine. So how much stock do GMs and coaches put in these workouts when it comes to a guy's draft stock? Yeah, it's part of the process. Obviously, how they play is, is the most important. Um, but this helps break ties. It gives you a sense of... Um, from a competitive standpoint, are they doing all the drills? Are they competing against uh, everybody else in their peer group? So the physical is helpful, the interview is helpful, and obviously as we're looking at these drills here, Joe, they are helpful, but at the end of the day, how they play on Saturdays uh, is the most important. All right, so we saw some quarterbacks who made a name for themselves playing on Saturdays this year. Three quarterbacks that most people think are going to go at the top of this draft, Caleb Williams, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels. If one of them pops this week, do you think a team like the Giants moves up to try and draft one of the top three quarterbacks? I think that's interesting. I think the Giants could. I think the Falcons at uh, eight certainly could. And I think the team to watch moving back would be the New England Patriots. Do they give Mac Jones a year under their new head coach, uh, Gerard Mayo? And it'll be interesting. I think the next group will include Michael Penix, the Indiana transfer at Washington, along with J.J. McCarthy from Michigan and Bo Nix of Oregon. All right, so you mentioned those next tier, that next tier of quarterbacks there. What do you need to see from them this week to either improve their draft stock or maybe have a team trade up to get them in the first round? Well, I think like for J.J. McCarthy, who we're looking at here is, you know, his arm strength and accuracy down the field. They, they ran the ball so much at Michigan, they didn't ask him to do a lot. Uh, Bo Nix just build on what he did at the Senior Bowl. He had a really good week down there. Had two outstanding years at Oregon after transferring from Auburn. Um, so you want to see him drive the ball down the field. And then Michael Penix, it's going to be uh, his physical, Joe. Um, had multiple ACL injuries at Indiana, a couple of shoulder injuries. Um, he's been relatively healthy at Washington, but that will be his biggest question. All right, let's talk about your former team, the Jets. They've seemingly got their eyes set on a tackle. Now, you had a lot of success with the guy you took in DeBrickashaw Ferguson there. There's about five or six guys that are talking about possibly going in the first round here. So who's one guy you're keeping a close eye on this weekend that, say, could end up with Gang Green? Well, Joe Alt uh, from Notre Dame, 33-game starter, uh, dad play of the league. He, he's really like a flawless left tackle prospect. He is... Um, Fluid, strong, smart, tough. Um, if I'm the Jets, I'm doing backflips if he makes it. Um, there'll be some other tackles that are good, but he's probably the one tackle, Joe, that has no holes in the game. Olu Fashano, who we're looking at here, another very talented left tackle. Um, Talise Fulaga, there, there's a number of guys that will go early in the draft, um, and the Jets should, be, should get a good left tackle when they pick. If you're in the seat there and Alt is not available, given how many tackles seem like they have first-round talent here, and you're the Jets, if there's still a number of names on the board, would you consider trading back to get one of your guys? Yeah, I think that makes sense. I think there's so many good tackles this year, and given all the other needs they need at speed at receiver, certainly another quarterback. I, I think they make, that makes a lot of sense. All right, let's talk about another quarterback here because we know the window with Aaron Rodgers is pretty short. Do you think that the Jets should look for an insurance policy in the draft this year, or does going the free agent route make more sense? Maybe both. 66 quarterbacks started a game last year when, unfortunately, Aaron Rodgers got hurt. The Jets just didn't have a good answer at backup quarterback. If I'm them, I'm considering maybe signing a veteran and drafting one. And then how important is it that they go out and get Rodgers a weapon in this draft? We know about the history in Green Bay where they didn't necessarily use those early picks to find weapons around Rodgers. Uh, that may have rubbed him the wrong way. But given where he's at in his career and their needs. Yeah, look, I think protecting Aaron Rodgers is job one, two, and three. Of course, they could use another weapon. You know, most teams certainly can. And I think they this draft has a ton of depth. You know, you could get into the Molokai Corleys of the world, maybe in the second or the third round. Somebody that had a good senior bowl week. There's plenty of depth at the receiver position. I think you have to 
solidify the offensive line as job number one. All right. Let the wheeling and dealing begin. Mike Tannenbaum, again, you can check him out on ESPN and his work with the 33rd team. Thanks so much for stopping by tonight, Mike. Enjoy the combine. Okay. Thanks so much for having me. All right. So what